Thank you, President Monson, for your teaching and example of Christ-like service and your charge for all of us to be missionaries. We ever pray for thee. In our dispensation, the Savior, Jesus Christ, referred to a gathering of the saints as my general conference. Wherever we are in this world, however we receive these proceedings, I testify that we are gathered in his conference. I also testify that we will hear his word, for he has said, whether it be by, by my own voice or by the voice of my servants, it is the same. Conferences have always been part of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Adam gathered his posterity and prophesied of things to come. Moses gathered the children of Israel and taught them the commandments he had received. The Savior taught multitudes, gathered both in the Holy Land and on the American continent. Peter gathered believers in Jerusalem. The first general conference in these latter days uh, were convened just two months after the Church was organized and has continued to this very day. These conferences are always under the direction of the Lord, guided by His Spirit. We are not assigned specific topics. Over the weeks and months, often through sleepless nights, we wait upon the Lord through fasting, prayer, study, and pondering. We learn the message that He wants us to give. Some might ask, why doesn't it inspiration come more easily and quickly. The Lord taught Oliver Cowdery, you must study it out in your mind. Then you must ask if it be right. Conference messages come to us after prayerful preparation through the Holy Ghost. This principle is true of all members of the Church as they prepare and participate in ward, stake, and general conferences. We study it out in our minds on what we need and desire from the Heavenly Father, and we pray to understand and apply that which we are taught. As the time for conference arrives, we sacrifice other activities, laying aside the things of this world to seek the things of a better. Then we gather our families to hear the word of the Lord, as King Benjamin's people did. Children and youth love to be included. We make a serious mistake if we assume that the conference is above their intellect and spiritual sensitivity. To the young members of the Church, I promise that you will, if you will listen, you will feel the Spirit well up within you. The Lord will tell you what He wants to do with your life. In conferences, we can receive the word of the Lord meant just for us. One member testified, As I listened to your address, I was astounded. Your talk was personal revelation directly from the Lord to my family. I have never experienced such a strong manifestation of the Spirit in my life as those minutes when the Holy Ghost spoke directly to me. Another said, I have never before felt so profoundly that a talk was being given to me. This is possible because the Holy Ghost carries the word of the Lord unto our hearts in terms we can understand. 
When I take notes at conference, I do not always write down exactly what the speaker is saying. I note the personalized direction the Spirit is giving me. What is said is not as important as what I hear and what I feel. That is why we make an effort to experience conference in a setting where it is still small voice of the Spirit can be clearly heard, felt, and understood. Oh, how we need general conference. Through conferences, our faith is fortified and our testimonies deepened. And when we are converted, we strengthen each other. When we stand strong amid the fiery dollars of these last days. In recent decades, the Church has already been <clears throat> spared the terrible misunderstandings and persecutions experienced by the early saints. It will not always be so. The world is moving away from the Lord faster and farther than ever before. The, adverse, the adversary has been loosed upon the earth. We watch, we hear, read, study, and share the words of prophets to be renewed and protected. For example, the family of proclamation to the world was given long before we experienced the challenges now facing the family. The living Christ, the testimony of the apostles, was prepared in advance of when we will need it most. We may not know all the reason why the prophets and conference speakers address us with certain topics in conference, but the Lord does. President Harold B. Lee taught, the only safety we have as members of this church is to give, give heed to the words and commandments the Lord shall give through his prophets. There will be some things that take patience and faith. You may not like what comes from the authority of the Church. It may contradict your personal views. It may contradict your social views. It may interfere with some of your social life. But if you listen to these things as if from the mouth of the Lord Himself, with patience and faith, the promise is that the gates of hell shall not prevail against you and the Lord will disperse the powers of darkness from before you and cause the heavens to shake for your good and his name's sake and glory. Amen. How did President Lee know what we would be facing in our day? He knew because he is a prophet, seer, and revelator. And if we listen and obey the prophets now, including those who speak in this very conference, will be strengthened and protected. The greatest blessings of general conference come to us after the conference is over. Remember the pattern recorded frequently in the scripture. We gather to hear the words of the Lord, and we return to our homes to live them. After King Benjamin taught his people he dismissed the multitude. They returned, everyone, according to their families, to their houses. In his day, Kim Limhi did the same. After teaching and listening to the people at the temple in Bountiful, the Savior entreated the people, Go ye unto your homes, and ponder upon the things which I have said and ask the Father in my name that you may understand and prepare your minds for the morrow, and I will come again unto you. We accept the Savior's invitation when we ponder and pray to understand what we've been taught and then go forward and do His will. Remember President Kimball's words, I have made my mind that when I go home from this general conference, 
There are many areas in my life that I can perfect. I have made a mental list of them, and I expect to go to work as soon as we get through. President Monson recently said, I encourage you to read the talks and to ponder the message contained therein. I have found in my own life that I gain even more from these inspired sermons when I study them in greater depth. In addition to personal and family scripture study, Heavenly Father wants us to study regularly and apply what we've learned in conference. I testify that those who put their trust in the Lord and heed the counsel and faith will gain great strength to bless themselves, their families, for generations to come. Heavenly Father has provided the way. At this conference, 97 percent of the Church can hear these messages in their own language. Millions of members in 197 countries will watch this conference in 95 languages. In just two or three days, the messages will appear on LDS.org in English, and within one week they will begin to be available in 52 languages. Now we receive the printed Church magazines within three weeks of the General Conference. No longer do we have to wait months for the talks to arrive by mail. On a computer, a phone, or other electronic device, we can read, listen to, watch, and share the teachings of the Prophets anytime, anywhere. We can enlarge our knowledge, strengthen our faith, and testimony, protect our families, and lead them safely home. The messages of this conference will also be woven into the online youth curriculum. Parents, you may access youth lessons for yourself on LDS.org. Find out what your children are learning and make the subject of your own study, family discussions, family home evenings, family councils, and personal interviews with each of your children with what they need to be taught individually. I encourage all members to use the resources of the Church websites and mobile apps. They are continually being refined so that they are easier to use and more relevant to our lives. On LDS.org we can find resources to help you study the gospel, strengthen your home and family, and serve in your calling that you can teach and testify. You can also find your ancestors who need temple ordinances and resources and support you in the work of salvation, including sharing the gospel. Parents can take the lead in preparing their children for baptism the priesthood, full-time missions, and the temple. They can help us walk the straight and narrow path of temple ordinances and covenants and qualify for the blessings of eternal life. In last April's conference in the General Priesthood meeting, I told about my father <clears throat> drawing a picture of a knight in armor to teach me about putting on the whole armor of God and the spiritual protection it brings. After that session was over, a father reported to his family what he had learned. Inspired, their young son Jason searched LDS.org to hear the message for himself. A few days later, he appeared in family home evening to share the lesson with his brothers and sisters. Here he is, a simple conference message inspired of the Lord, received by a child who taught to his family in a personal and powerful way. I love his breastplate of righteousness. I love his shield of faith to thwart the fiery darts of the adversary. 
These are the blessings of conference. My brothers and sisters, I bear my special witness that the Lord Jesus Christ lives and stands at the head of this Church. This is His conference. I promise you in His name that if you pray with sincere desire to hear your Father's voice in the messages of this conference, you you will discover that He has spoken to you and to help you, to strengthen you, and to lead you home into His presence. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.